So we're missing a torso and a head. They say one man's trash... Oh, my God. It's different. ...is another man's treasure. Oh, my word. Wow! It's something else. Nowhere is that more true than here, at Lots Road Auction House in Chelsea. What the hell is that? Oh, it's enormous fun. I'm still hunting for a gold Afghan carpet. 1350. This is where London's wealthy elite... You sure you can do without it, ma'am? OK, 14. 1400. ...come to refill their mansions with the latest trends. Is that sort of a play on pomegranates and stuff? It's a vagina, Nick. Yeah. I think this place is a bit nuts, isn't it? But with an auction every week, the staff are under constant pressure... Who accepted this? You're not taking anyway. ...to find new items that will make the most money. I've spent here for £40,000. I think the monkeys are definite. ..and keep boss Roger Ross off their backs. I've got a short fuse, man. No, uh, no, no, but you need to apologise to me. I will hold resentments against member of staff. I will be watching for how they behave, and then I might explode at them. Welcome to the strangest auction house in Britain. Going, going, gone. It's springtime in Chelsea, and a new week at Lots Road. What do you call that, Tom? That's Lelandia. <laughs> Poodle tree. This week, the valuers are taking in items for the annual garden sale, happening in six days' time. Lots of heavy bits of lumpy bits of stone and bronze coming in. They're fabulous. Love them. But again, they wouldn't fit in my flat. The garden sale's going to be different from everything else we've had because it's, uh, I mean, uh, I, I suppose that everybody's sap rises in the, in the spring uh, and Lost Road is no different. We're getting big animals in for the sale and we're getting big trees and plantage. It's nice just to change the sort of layout and the theme for a week and have a different kind of vibe. Do you know, that's a surefire seller, isn't it? it is. That's, that's going to well. gonna fly out. As always, the garden sale is headed up by chief auctioneer Nick Carter. But this year, Nick is under more pressure than ever to make it a success. The last month's business has not been good, and we are currently £210,000 adrift on the figures for last year. So we need to really seriously step up. Boss Roger Ross wants Nick to make up for the shortfall in his profits. Well, I could start. Shall I start? Garden sale. We're hoping for great things. I'm wondering what we would expect the total to be. Anyone going to hazard a guess? It should be 225. Roger does get, like to give targets that are unrealistic. He said 200 grand for the sale, which is not going to happen. It's going to be, and I reckon it's going to be in the, in the realms of 160,000 quid. That's what I would see it this week. I think 200,000 is way too much. Anyway, thank you. Good afternoon. Nick, have an early night, mate. You can go home now, can you? Is it time? Nick's target may be ambitious, but many of Lots Road's customers have big gardens to go with their big houses. He is cool, though. He's another one with attitude. He's imposing. With some of the items in place, buyers are starting to browse the sale rooms. It's quite saggy. Uh, notice this. Well, that would look nice, wouldn't it? On the hunt for some plants is Lots Road regular Megan, along with her friend Sally. These are the ones I want for the terrace. A bit dry now. I hope I can just keep oh, them alive. Gosh, That'd look fabulous on the yeah, terrace. Megan imports silk caftans and in two weeks' time is hosting a launch party for her business in her garden. It's a, it's a beautiful big space and I've already got some trees and it, it looks lovely. I just wanted to just vamp it up a bit. Wow, look at that. Little number. Oh, here, look, 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 look. Here we go. These ones are alive. Oh, they look much healthier. Oh, my God, they're fab. I've got about 40 or 50 people coming. 
They're funky little numbers. It's such a nice terrace. I want it looking fabulous for this particular launch. Megan's garden is quite unusual. Now that spring is coming in, it's time to use it. It's planted hundreds of feet off the ground, outside her London penthouse, just over the river from Chelsea. Going through a divorce at the moment, you need all tranquility and a little bit of peace. A glass of champagne, good friends, and a nice relaxing environment. It's vital. Otherwise, I'd probably be off the edge seven levels down. <laughs> I've got a wonderful friend who helps me do a shampoo and vacuum this um, artificial grass. After each season, you have to do that. Look, back to normal. Looking lovely. And then the water feature, I... That's actually a lift shaft. Why do you have a plastic, plastic lawn as opposed to... What do I... <laughs> How dare you? It's practical. It's the only way. You can't have a lawnmower on a penthouse up on the top floor. It was hard getting it up with a cherry picker, but it was well worth it once it's here. While much of the foliage in Megan's garden is artificial, the plants inside are real. That was actually left by Andy Murray when I bought it off him. He left that here for me as a present. Along with this console, he left me that. Yes. Yes, and I along with leaving his tennis racket and some, te some tennis balls and sweatband and a, a collection of his music. My mother is over the moon. I sent it all to her in Australia, and now she's got it there. I said, Mum, why don't you eBay something? She said, darling, don't be so ridiculous. I've got Andy Murray's balls. Nobody's got them. So... <laughs> with Megan's launch party looming, she's depending on Lots Road to come up with the goods. This has to be more spring and flowers all and things hanging down. So it's yet to be done. So I think once we get the things from Lots Road, hopefully I get lucky. Who knows? You never know how many people are going to be there or what's going to happen. Fingers crossed on that one. It's a good one. You like it? Yeah, it's nice. Is it, is it uh, resin, is it? It's only resin. Yeah. Plastic. Good look, though, isn't it? At the auction house, Nick has come up with a plan to bring the garden sale to life. You busy, Roger? No, man. Oh, no, he's not busy. Hi. What do you think is the idea of the garden sale? Yeah. Getting some sheep in the building. Well, you love sheep, and I love sheep. And I think, what, for an hour or two, you mean? Oh, thought for the morning. For the morning? Have you got any sheep? No, I haven't got any sheep. What have you got? Horses, Horses ponies, and donkeys. That's it. That's it. That's I'm a shame, isn't it? Yeah. I don't know whether you do this or not, but I want to hire some sheep. I've always had a bit of an obsession with getting some sheep into this building. But, no, it's just a big good talking point for people and, you know, come in, ooh, have you seen what they got down Lots Road? They had some bloody sheep in the cell room last week. Yeah, I like all that sort of stuff. What next? Well, you may as well get some pigs at the same time. I think you'd be better off concentrating on the 1,000 unanswered emails he's got than getting live sheep in. You don't have sheep in gardens anyway. You have sheep in fields. While spring marks the start of the garden sale, it also marks the end of William's trial as general manager. <laughs> Can you actually, would you, would you have a gorilla in your garden, Gordon, really? Yeah. Would you? Yeah. I'd rather yeah. have a fountain. William was formerly a major in the British Army. Working here, I mean, I'm, I'm immensely uh, pleased to have had the privilege of being asked to come and work here. I don't know whether Roger regrets it now. But isn't that fun? I have enjoyed every, every moment I've been here. Everybody's got the disease here, and I'm, I've caught it too. Like the aircraft, eh? And I would have very much like to stay. Uh, I would say he was thorough, which is a good thing. Roger has an important decision to make. So I'm, I'm making a, a list of pros and cons uh, for William. He, I've just been reminded it's seven months, so we've gone past the six month. Well, that's not unusual here that deadlines get missed. My job is to work out 
what's realistic for the future and whether I'm truly satisfied. We're all okay with giving good news to people, but if it's bad news, that's, that's tricky, right? You know, one would rather not. In Chelsea, the auction house is gearing up for a very special sale. Just uh, a thought about the garden sale. So if anything comes in between now and then, could we hold anything that's um, sort of architectural, garden orientated? Auctioneer Nick Carter has been put in charge and is under pressure to make the sale bigger and better than ever before. We don't see a good sale then. Got the bar coming down, yeah. You can put the bar on there. It's a garden party, mate, isn't it? As part of his plan to increase profits, Nick has decided to host a preview party for the Chelsea Glitterati. What we really want is to create a really big buzz about it so that we get a really good sale total. I'm expecting our wealthiest clients to come along. You need your clients who've got the big garden, so they're our primary objective. We're going hell for leather on this one. While preparations for Nick's party get underway... Five minutes, see you up there. Sure. Roger has called a meeting with William. Got to make a, a choice about what I'm going to do. And in a meeting we'll, with him, that will help me uh, be even clearer. Do you mind if I sit this one? No, no, you sit there. OK, you've been here six months. Tell me the highs and the lows. Highs? I, I mean, I've, I've had an, an awful lot of uh, what I would call entertainment, and I've enjoyed being here so far because it's, it is the most extraordinary environment I've ever worked in, without mm, a shadow of doubt. Mm. Everybody is odd. <laughs> so what about any other grey areas of stuff? Have you got things pending? Because on occasions I get things and I don't respond. So are you doing it too? Because I'm, sh I'm sure the staff would find it rather annoying. I'm not aware of anything that I haven't answered. OK. I asked William to do something last week. He tells me he's done it. The person I spoke to said, no, he never told me anything about it. So I'm going, oh, my God. Now, who do I believe? Is it this or is it that? And that sort of irritation, I don't know if, I don't know if it's stressful, but, but actually I don't need that. With jobs on the line at Lots Road, Nick is going the extra mile to make sure the garden sale is a success. I want him to come in and go, wow, fantastic. Hi, Ben. How you doing? How are you doing, all right? I'll see you, Nick. Nice to see you. Cool, it's good, isn't it? He's travelled to Staffordshire to visit a supplier who sells some unusual bespoke items. Life-size bronze elephant. Solid marble tusks. Yeah. And how much does it weigh? It weighs about 700 kilo. That might work then. I think your chimp's worth a run as well. <laughs> how many of those you sold? Popular though. I've been looking for sheep. Maybe that's my answer. It's a bit of fun. That might save me the bother of, 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 of finding some real ones. With sheep and statues in the bag, all Nick needs now are some fountains. How much is that? Four and a half, five grand, maybe. Five grand. Well, you can try one of those. OK. And how much are those? Three and a half grand. I don't know, really, whether I've got a punter for them and whether they'd want to spend three grand. Some of the country piles, stables, courtyard. Actually, you now I think about it, there is someone who comes to mind. The customer Nick is thinking of is Horse Mad Mandy, a former show rider. Trust him? I did it professionally for about seven years. But now it's my hobby. It's just exhilarating and it's exciting. And it's, they're such beautiful animals. I don't think I can live without it. <laughs> Mandy gave up riding professionally after marrying wealthy developer Martin, 
a Lots Road regular. Going to auctions, it's been in my sort of DNA since I was um, most probably six when I used to go with my mother. I do like going to an auction, very competitive person. If I see bargains, I can't resist them. Martin and Mandy own a luxury hotel in Hampshire, which is crammed full of items from Lots Road. The most he's ever spent is about 30,000. If you take Martin to an auction, he has to buy something. It doesn't matter where or what kind of auction. He doesn't go there just to go and have a look. He goes there to seriously buy. Martin and Mandy's 10 million pound home in Surrey is also a shrine to Lots Road. So here it is. They've been doing it up with the help of Mandy's sister, Sarah. And it's our beautiful house. <laughs> These chandeliers and light fittings that we got in Lots Road are perfect in here. And there's quite a lot of Lots Road stuff in here. These cabinets, the mirrors, the aeroplane, the car, this, this, the clock. This is Lots Road. Again, Lots Road. This has still got its ticket on Lots Road. This one and this one. And this is, I call it like a Versace mirror in the style of Versace, isn't it? <laughs> That's a Lots Road. And then this horse was another shell. The only space left to fill is Mandy's 380-acre garden. Yeah, so we were thinking that um, we need to brighten up this a little bit, looking for some big, spectacular things and some quirky, interesting things. I tell you what one of my favourite animals is. And that's an elephant. Oh, yes. Yeah. An so elephant. That's what he must get, a stone elephant. A stone elephant or a bronze one. Depending what we see, depends what goes there, I guess. What's coming out now is the piece de resistance. There are just two days to go until the garden sale preview party. Yeah. Nick's new items are arriving just in time. Nick's pulled out all the stops to ram it full of more garden stuff because he wants it to be a bit big success. Done. Big sell means big money. That's what it's all about. The more lots you got, the more chance you got of selling stuff, haven't you? No more lots, please, under any circumstances. For the antique and modern sale, the sales are crammed to capacity. Quick, go and get underneath it. <laughs> While Nick and the porters struggle to fit in all the new items, rumours are circulating about General Manager William. I've just heard that um, Williams might be leaving soon. Have you seen that film, Save Willie? <laughs> so we hear that William's leaving. I heard that, yeah, I did hear. I don't know. I haven't had anything confirmed. Hi. Hi, 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 Willie. Um... Roger has called another meeting with William, this time behind closed doors. Boom, 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 boom. Good stuff. I'm going to have to give you notice as exact words. I mean, if it could happen to me, it could happen to anybody. I made the mistake in assuming that someone from a completely different industry would be able to work in this business. The next day, the sale rooms are finally ready for the preview party. I think it's really exciting. I think it just screams garden sale, so I'm really thrilled about it. But while things are looking good inside the auction house, there's a problem outside. No physical action has happened. 
A few weeks ago, Roger asked Nick to spruce up the front of the building in time for the garden sale. East has been and gone, am I allowed to say that? And nothing has happened, so I'm a little bit miffed. It's just that somehow I need this building to stand out a little bit more. The whole exterior of the building thing's got to be kept very quiet because I want to surprise everybody with it. The plan is we're going to get Voida, the urban artist, to come and do something on the front of the building. Something a bit irreverent and a bit sharp. I've always liked to have that thing where people go, oh, what's he done now? Why's Why has he done that? Urban artist Voida keeps his true identity under wraps. All right, Banksy. All right. <laughs> I don't know how to describe my work. What's most important for me is, is to paint what I want to paint. As long as I'm happy, it doesn't matter so much what other people think. But yeah, it's good. Lots Road's receptionists are not convinced. What's going on outside? Vandalism. Vandalism. <laughs> it will be vandalism. Yeah. My initial reaction was, call the police. There's someone vandalizing. I'm sure we should be. Yeah, exactly. But no, apparently it's legit. One local resident is equally unimpressed. <laughs> and has reported Voida to the police. See, that just follows on from my phone call that I had from someone just phoned up randomly, said, do you know there's someone beating on the wall? You're a crime wave. You go. It's all it's gone mad. <laughs> The police take no action after discovering that this street art was commissioned by Nick. That's what Roger wanted. Roger said he wanted something that drew attention to the building. That's what he said. That's what he's got. Oh, dear. There goes the neighborhood. It'd be great if you were 14 and were into skateboarding. You'd think it was really cool. But most of our customers are about 70 and the uh, sophisticated European ladies who live in Eaton Square. They're probably not going to like this. It's the day of the garden sale preview party. It has to be said, I do know how to throw a party. I've been to enough. So I think I've learned how to throw a party by now. Nick has invited all the regulars. Hello, sir. How are you again? Oh, delish. This will be their first glimpse of the new items. Wouldn't those look good on your terrace? You are such a cheeky sod. I think they'd look fabulous. They could look good in a vineyard or in a garden. And of the controversial artwork. I think it's great. I think it's great. Look, and it's the bright colour. It matches my latest Chanel nail varnish. No, I think it's really trendy. This is a work of art. Yeah. I mean, it's, a, it's stunning. Yeah. I find it very sensuous, the lines. Yeah. It's very organic. Yeah. Nick's garden sale lots are also going down well. I think they're gorgeous. I think they'd look perfect in our country house in Tame in Oxfordshire. I love that. I'm, I'm, doing the, I'm doing my garden at the moment. And I think this, you could really do something with this. I think there could be a lot of people interested in this. <laughs> the whole purpose of today is to get people interested in what we've got for sale this week. Hopefully, they'll all get attracted to the same stuff and bid each other up. That's the whole point. The more interest you've got from more, from more individuals, the higher the price goes. With competition hotting up, caftan importer Megan is keen to get Nick on side. These ones here, Nick, look. Those? I want those. Can you, not, can you stop everyone else bidding on Sunday? I'm afraid that's not part of my job. My job is to make the most, the most money out of them possible. Oh, no, don't be like that. Come and on, we can be friends out here. <laughs> that's my job. <laughs> I want them on my terrace. <laughs> also after standout pieces for her garden is wealthy businesswoman Galia, along with her husband, Michael. That one I like. Galia is one of several customers who have fallen for the gazebo, but she's alone in liking a bronze sculpture. It looks as though one of the members of the staff have been tied up 
and I'm about to whip him. And what's wrong with that? It looks as though he's being tortured. And what's wrong with that? I, I'm abused, and I, you know, look at him and think, oh, what's he doing? Is he having fun? He looks as if he is. So if I'm amused, I'm sure all the guests who come to visit us will be amused as well. And frankly speaking, we need to amuse them because, you know, some part of the time they're very hungry. <laughs> Galia's guests are actually clients who come to stay at the weight loss retreat she runs from her Georgian manor house. This is my dungeon. So that is Siberian cedar barrel. It's a wet steam uh, chamber uh, where we actually put people, steam them nicely, and then they can have um, alternative treatments, uh, one of them being whipping and the other one being honey slapping. You place people here after the steam um, and then you just whip them gently and not so gently, depending on their behavior. After their whipping or honey slapping, Galia's guests get to recover in her four-acre garden. My garden is actually quite peaceful and simple. It's a perfect opportunity for people just to rest, to detox. The garden can take a little bit more. We can make it a little bit more entertaining and uh, interesting and um, thought-provoking, perhaps. But it's not just garden items that Galia's after. A variety of other lots will also be on sale this weekend. And Galia has spotted something rather special. Is that the one? Yes, please. OK. It's an interesting item. Absolutely. Yeah. That is an aquamarine. It's a semi-precious stone. To me, it looks like quite a reasonable quality. And it's surrounded by diamonds, probably new. <laughs> Five to seven thousand. We can have a look and see if there's any interest. Okay. Yeah, we can do that. I just love it. I must have it. I think it's going to be a good day for the auction. There's going to be a lot of battles. I hope I'm going to win some of them. It's gone very well this evening. Yeah, good. I'm happy. About the right amount of people turned up. Hi. Got through the Prosecco. The plates look really nice, so everyone seemed to have a good time. It's been a success. It's two days until the auction, and Roger has come in for a last minute inspection. He hasn't yet seen the garden sale lots or the new exterior. That's nothing, is it? Does it say anything? I, don't, I can't work it out. Do I think it's OK? No, I don't think it's OK. I think it's pointless. But well, there you are. But as the customers approve, Roger will live with it for the next few months. Hopefully, he'll be more impressed with the sale rooms. Ah, fantastic. Wow. <laughs> Wow. Looks great, doesn't it? Amazing. Look, 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 look. Actually, I live in a very windy spot. This might work for me because the wind would go through it. I think it's amazing. Good. Good, good. The garden sale is ready to go. And two days after being given his marching orders, so is William. William, hi. Can we meet in the staff room? Just hours before he's due to leave for good, Roger has called another meeting. I've changed my mind because I've had a bit of a reality check. Da, 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 da. William's got lots of good qualities, and maybe I need to focus more on the, his good qualities and what he is doing rather than what he's not doing. And that's what I've spent my life focusing what people aren't doing. Roger has come up with a less radical plan. He's found William a more suitable position. What I would like is for you to move sideways and do more of a company secretary role rather than a general manager role. Mm -hmm. yeah. I'm now confused because 
You know, you told me yesterday that Thursday would be my last day, so I started to say goodbye to everybody. <laughs> well, that, you didn't need to do that, but well, there you are. Well, I mean, Roger, if you tell me one thing, I tend to sort of, which is of such yeah. fundamental, yeah. I tend to believe it. Well, the staff are aware of something because you, you, you... Well, you, you told me, got... Roger, to yes. be entirely fair. I yep. mean, what do you expect me to do? You are capricious. Capricious? Yeah, I don't even know what it means. You think of things and you do them. Yeah. But without necessarily thinking... I all... do not think out the implication. So that's what capricious means. I'm going to write it down. I thought it was a place in Turkey I could go and visit. <laughs> that's Cappadocia. Capricious. I don't even know how to spell it, but anyway, whatever. OK, good. <laughs> it's a very good job that I really like being here, I tell you. OK. So a, re um, a reprieve, whatever that means. So, uh, yep. <laughs> <laughs> Never a dull moment at Lost Road. And I, uh, here I am, I suppose, be, for the first time, being on the receiving end of, uh, of a, uh, a, 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 a Rogerism. Listen, as they say in Hollywood, to be continued. To be continued. I suppose everybody else has <laughs> had, had in, the, in their past, but we've. We've, re we, we've recovered the situation. Williams is a very sweet, lovely person, and I'd be happy to work with him forever. I just need to give him a bit more attention because I've neglected him. It's like having a pet, you know, and you, oh, I like that pet, but, you know, you sort of ignore it, and I, I've, I'm guilty of ignoring it, like I ignore most of the staff. William will take up his new post as company secretary in a few weeks' time, once Roger has found someone to take over. Tom? Yeah? What's that saying in the, um, Field of Dreams? Field of Dreams? Yeah. Was that with Kevin what Costner? Does... Yeah, with Kevin Costner. Build it and if you build it, they will come. And there is one obvious candidate. Doing it my way. Awfully nice to see you. Word of rumor that Carter is going to become the manager. Nick's wrestling for power, control of the auction house. He wants to be general manager, I think. The right hand man. Ah! Oh. You alright, Tom? Hello well, there, boss. How's it going? You alright, Cuddly? Sorry? You alright, Cuddly? Yeah, good, yeah. What are the rumors relating to you, then? I don't know. I've got no idea what you're talking about. It's Sunday, and D-Day for Nick's garden sale. Right, here we go. Thank you so much. Okay. This is, I hope, my lucky number. Big Where are they? Star lots include a bronze elephant, a wrought iron gazebo, a horse fountain, a family of plastic sheep, and a massive aquamarine pendant. Nick's put a lot of effort into it and pulled out all the stops to get some good stuff in. I think he's, he wants to prove a point to Roger. Roger set me a target of 200 grand, and I'm quietly confident that we can get to 200,000. 320 to 420. That's for the pair of olive trees. So we'll see how that goes. We'll keep an eye on that one. The room's absolutely packed. I've come in this morning. There's a real buzz about the place. The garden party that we organised last week has energised people into thinking, yeah, let's get down to Lot's Row and see what's going on. Uh, anyone who's wishing to attend the cell, please make your way down to the ground floor now. <laughs> One of the wealthiest buyers in today is auction house addict yeah. Martin, along with his wife, Mandy. Thanks very They're much. out to buy items for their 380-acre garden. So, darling, the horse, then? You like the horse? He was sending me off to look at things because he wants to know if I like it before he buys it. Five to eight thousand. Huh? You want that? He loves the excitement from going around, looking at everything, and then he's there. He's he goes for it. Lot number forty-seven, Garden Fountain. Two hundred pounds on that. Buy a twelve or one sixty. Going, going. Gone. You got it. So that's yours. He just buys so many things. 
can't keep 67 the bench. <laughs> lot number 50, life size bronze elephant. We're starting the bidding off on this lot at three thousand pounds. At three thousand, three two, three five. Very competitive person. You know, I don't normally like to lose. Five five, sir. Do you want five five? Five five, five five. Sold, you got it, so that's yours. A few things that are really of, of good value here. So, you know, we've looked other places like an elephant of that level. They are £15,000, not £5,000, so it is a very good investment. So far, Martin has had it all his own way. Like a donkey to a slaughter. But he's about to get some tough competition. Today I'm very interested in quite a lot of items, actually. I just basically don't like losing. <laughs> Hopefully, I'm not going to be outbid today. <laughs> Next up is a statue that both Galia and Martin have got their eye on. Lot number 75, the bronze boy, 19, 2,000, 2,2, two, 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 four, sir. No, it's a ladies' bid then at 2,200 pounds. Gentlemen's out, 2,2, two, two, yours, ma'am. Uh, lot number 104, life-size feature there of two boys scrumping. There we are. Anyone want to go 14 bid, 15 bid, 16 ma'am, 16 bid, 17 sir, 17 bid, 18 ma'am, 18, 19 sir, 19, 2000, 2000, 21. No, I'm at 2000 pounds and it's the ladies bid at 2000, that's 221 in front. Can, can, can you remove that lady from out there and put her somewhere else? <laughs> she's, only, she's making me have a bad day. <laughs> we usually win when she's not here. afternoon of the garden sale. Lot number 185, the merino sheep, the set of three. With competition fierce between two of their richest customers, do I see 550, 550? Auctioneer Nick Carter is speeding through the lots. Gentlemen's bid, 650 do I see, 650. Is it seven, sir? No, it's 650. It's the ladies' bid, going, going, gone. 244 out of 1,000. Of course, it won't poo on your garden either, so that's good. Amazing, absolutely amazing. It's, uh, it's gone turbo, it's absolutely full on. Um, so we've still got 100 plus lots to go. With Galia and Martin bidding for everything in sight, Megan hasn't had much of a look in. Two, two, nine more yucca plants. She wants to buy some plants to spruce up her terrace. 318 one, to 180, any advance on that? 190, anyone there on 190 it is? 200, two bid, any advance on 200? No, I'm at 318 then. Come on, come on. At 200 come on. pounds, going, going. Got Yay! all back. <laughs> Lot number 230. So far, so good. Now all we need are the beautiful olive trees. Lot number 230, olive trees, a pair. Three, do you want them, the olive trees? Three. Go for it. Oh, fuck. No, no, no. How much? 300, man. For the two? For the two. No, I've got enough. No? 290 <laughs> help you? Does 290 help? All right. 290. 318 at 290. See, I like to help, man. Oh, that was a bit stressful. Oh, 140, 150 here, Marty, 160. I need a glass of champagne. Worked well. It went down on price. It's a good, very good man. Next, wonderful. Next up is an item that Mandy has her heart set on. The horse fountain is beautiful. Well, I hope he gets it because we are um, going to be building an equestrian centre. I think it's really cool. <laughs> but someone else has their eye on the fountain too. Michael dear, can you just measure the horses for me? If you don't get it, um, no, they're not. you'll regret it for the rest of your life because you will never find a piece like that. If you get it, you might regret overpaying, but, you know, the money you can just need to go on in. That's as simple as that. 81. Oof, like this. Uh, this is the bronze wall fountain there with three horses on this slot. I start the bidding at £2,000. There's 2-2, two, 2-4. Two, two, what about 2-6? Two, 2-6. Six? Two, six. Two eight, anyone now? Two eight, ladies bid. Two eight, uh, two eight. I've got three thousand here. Three two, gentlemen's bid. Three five, ma'am. Three five, three eight, three eight. Four thousand, four thousand, four two, four five, four eight, five thousand and two, five five, five eight, six thousand, six two. So no, I'm at six thousand pounds. It's the ladies bid then. Going, going. Gone. You got it, ma'am. That is yours. A lovely thing. I didn't buy my horse. Um, number eighty two. 
he wouldn't he wouldn't go any higher. I was trying to nudge him. The the other lady, she was bidding on it. I can't believe it. Never mind. You win some, you lose some. Yours, ma'am, at three eight. So far, Galia has bought two bronze sculptures, three sheep, and the fountain. But she's not stopping there. Lot number 100, the gazebo, showing there to my right. A uh, popular lot, this, and I shall start the bidding off there at £500. The gazebo is estimated at £800 to £1,200. £900 here. What about £1,000 now? £1,000, the gentleman's bid. I now need £1,100. 11 bid. 11 I've got on my right. What about 12 now? Ladies bid at 12. Martin ducks out at 1,200. 15. 16 bid, 16. Now, Galia is up against an anonymous phone bidder. 3,000 is bid. 3-2, ma'am. 3-2. 3-4. I eight, think it's sadly, you know, nerve-wracking. 3-8. I know exactly what I'm doing, even though it might not look that way. I'm at 3-8 on the telephone and selling. If you just keep doing that all the time, you're going to win. Once at 3-8, twice at 3 -8. 4,000, 4,000 bid, back with the lady at 4,000. She and loves no, meeting no, people, no, don't no, worry no. about it. I'm not she the, loves it. No, no, I'm not there to, you she know. She loves torturing them. 6-2, six, 6-4. Six, Out at 6,200 pounds, going, going, gone. So. Galia has paid over five times the estimate. I think we should have an even bigger round of applause for Michael, though, because he's the, the <laughs> nerve you've shown there, Michael. Well. My yes. word. He's checking into Priory. Um, <laughs> yeah, I'm not feeling very well, to be honest. I think I'll have to have a little heart attack and uh, be taken away yeah. rapidly before she spends any more. Um, Did you sign the will yet, dear? Sadly for Michael, it's not over yet. Lot five, two, one. We've got the aquamarine pendant necklace. Very, very pretty indeed. And I'm going to start the bidding off He's there. promised to buy Galia the aquamarine pendant. 550 bid. 600, ma'am. 650 bid. But he's up against some tough competition. 1800. 1900. 2000. 22. Gentleman's bid at 2000 at 22 now bid. 24, 24. 26, 26. 28, 28. 3,000. No, then it's at 2,8. 2,800 once, twice, three times. Commiserations, ma'am. There at 2,8. I'm very sorry, proud sorry. of Michael. He kept his nerve, didn't you? Total to pay is 25,630 and 8 pence, please. Could you be more precise, please? <laughs> Ultimate lot there, last piece there. Now, are we all done? It was a good day, fab day, best sale we've had for years and years and years. It's the morning after the auction, and the sales figures are in. I think the word, it's the, it's the P word, it's phenomenal. I know it sounds like it should have an F, but it's got a P. And, um, bloody hell. Nick has beaten Roger's target of 200,000 pounds. 227 with after sales, I think we'll probably, and that's against after sales, so we're probably with after sales. I reckon it'll top 240. I can't actually remember a sale like it in living memory. It's a Lots Road revival. Nick, I just want to thank you for the garden sale. I just looked through the paperwork. Bloody awesome, mate. I mean, I can't remember such a success. It was fun. Having spent over £25,000 at the auction, Michael and Galia can also take some of the credit for its success. Great. Are they heavy? If you would like to take the horses and put them over there, please. Yeah, yeah. The ship, well, I think they are by far the most amusing. We've overpaid for the gazebo, uh, but I think it's worth every penny. I don't think Michael will agree with that, uh, or maybe given time or more alcohol. It's one of those things she doesn't like losing at an auction. So, regardless if it was another £5,000, she would have bought it anyway. <laughs> there you go, Princess. Cheers. Another little job done.
Andy may have missed out on the horse fountain. Sarah, which way do we want him? Looking out? But she has brought one of the star lots back to her home in Surrey. We had no idea we were going to come home with this boy. So um, we're really, really pleased with him. He's now in a prime location overlooking the beautiful garden. He's got a lovely spot and he's absolutely gorgeous. Uh, he really is my favourite thing. Back in London, Megan's caftan launch party is in full swing. Oh, my God! It's a hurricane. Let's all go outside. It's a beautiful, beautiful, sunny day. And a bit of wind isn't going to stop her showing off her new plants. How did the trees perform? No, they're, <laughs> they're dancing, my dear. They're dancing. They look terrific. <laughs> Over at Lutz Road, some big news has just broken. How does it feel to be the new general manager? Very, very different, Tom. It's just the same job as I was doing before, really. <laughs> There's been a coup. Um, and uh, Nick's uh, full armoured tank division has moved in and it's positioned itself in the Kremlin Square. Isn't that right, Nick? Uh, Nick has been announced as new general manager. Nick has six months to prove he's up to the job. I hope your six month trial goes well. I wish you luck. Someone's got to do it. Someone has got to do it. Someone's got to have the final say. I think he'll do well. Yeah, I think, I think he will. And he's got so much energy. Yeah, I think it's great. I'm quite excited. To some extent, Carter always slightly thought he was a general manager anyway. So I don't think it would make that much difference. Sadly, it's not worked out for Willie. Now Rogers uh, handed over the management of the company to me. It's a new sheriff in town. <laughs>